Protesters force their way into a building that's supposed to represent the people of Hong Kong. But for the millions who voiced their anger over the past few weeks, it's a symbol of China's increasing control over their semi-autonomous territory. Around a thousand protesters broke off from Monday's main protest march of around half a million people and smashed their way into the Hong Kong legislature. Police didn't try to stop them. We want to make government to not try to avoid our voice again because you know we are the future of the Hong Kong citizens and we have to fight for our future freedom. Protests swelled in June in opposition to a proposed law that would allow suspects to be extradited to China. It's since been withdrawn by the government. But the protests have morphed into general opposition to China's increasing grip on Hong Kong and the sense that Beijing is undermining the freedoms promised before the handover. This is the image of Hong Kong that China wants to project, an indivisible part of China, celebrating the July 1st anniversary of its return from British rule in 1997 and back to its rightful owner, Beijing. But across town at the Legislative Council, protesters were raising a different flag, the old colonial one, and a banner that's blamed the government rather than the protesters for the violence. Many say they've been forced into this action and that vandalizing the chamber was the only way to get their message out. But hours later, once the protesters had been cleared by police, Hong Kong's leader took the opportunity to blame the demonstrators. A sudden scene that we have seen, which really saddens a lot of people and shocks a lot of people, is the extreme use of violence. Uh, if the cause of the social tensions that we have seen is a bill to amend the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance. On the 15th of June, I have announced the suspension of the bill. Monday's protest was one of the most destructive Hong Kong has seen in decades. Protesters covered their faces, afraid of retribution. And police are now treating the Legislative Council building as a crime scene. But have the protesters done more harm than good to their cause? I think Hong Kong should be a place where more peaceful and sensible protests take place, not violent clashes, damaging the Legislative Council building. I think those protesters went too far. But even members of the pro-democracy movement who didn't take part in the violence blamed the authorities. The biggest worry is, of course, Hong Kong people's safety, because these are critical times. If the government continues to choose not to solve this political problem and chooses instead to use police or even Beijing to deal with Hong Kong people, then we may be facing the biggest tragedy in the 20 years since the handover. The Chinese government has accused protesters of trampling on the rule of law. Will this violence be the perfect excuse for a crackdown? Or a day that symbolized the power of the people in Hong Kong? Abu Bakr al-Shamahi, The Newsmakers.